What's up, guys? I'm going to be going over the 3E P15 power station here. And I'm calling this one a power station because I don't know that the solar rechargeability is that great on this. If it is, then I'll call it a solar generator. Bottom line is, guys, don't get mixed up about those terms. It's just a way to better understand what these things can and can't do. But I want to go over this system because I've been impressed with it. I've been testing it for over two months now taken it on lots of trips, use it in lots of different situations, especially using it for a DC fridge and just charging my laptop and my drone. And it has been wonderful for those things. So if you're looking at this as something like an emergency preparedness item, definitely not really uh, thinking that's going to be a good fit for this. But if you're just looking for some easy portable power, then the 3E P15, I think is a really good option. So I want to go test those things and show you what I've been able to do with it so far. So if that interests you, stick around because I think you'll like this P15 unit. All right, guys, so off the bat, spoiler alert, I do like this unit, okay? Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect for every situation, so stick with me because I'm going to explain. This does have a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is great. It basically means it's going to run everything from a microwave or a toaster on down, even things like fridge, freezer, lights, fans, whatever. But the biggest reason I have used this is for portable power running DC fridge, drones, laptops, and stuff like that. So I don't think that this would even classify as a good enough unit for something like van life, because even in a van, the power consumption is going to be larger than what this can handle. But it does have some expandability, which I'll get into here in just a second. But the inverter really is good, and it's got good battery capacity. I'll just get into that. This has basically a 1,000 watt-hour battery. It's technically 1,008 watt-hours, but I'm going to call it a 1,000 watt-hours to keep things simple. But one of the coolest features is that this actually has an expansion battery port. Right here on the back side, you can plug in another battery of the same size and actually the same battery that's in this unit. So that way I can actually get 2,000 watt-hours of battery. Now, doing that actually gets it to the same battery capacity as like this Ace Volt and the P2001 from Alcatel and stuff like that. Even similar to the Flex 1500 from Energy, the 2000 watt hour battery is the same size battery that comes on the Titan solar generator, which is much bigger than this. So that battery expansion is actually pretty impressive. Now, some of you guys are going to hate that it's lithium ion and not lithium iron phosphate. I get that. But think about it. This is not meant to be some super powerhouse system. It's meant to be lightweight and portable which is why they use lithium ion, because lithium iron phosphate is much heavier. Now, the weakest link that I see in this system is actually the solar input. It does have 300 watts of solar input. However, the charge parameter is what kills me. It's a charge parameter of 10 to 40 volts at 8 amps. And what that means, even for something like this 100 watt solar panel, which is the kind that we have at PoweredPortableSolar.com, these are the ones that I use personally, the ones I like the most. They have the highest output of all the 100 watt panels that I've tested. This has a VOC or an open circuit voltage rating of about 21 volts. And so to put two panels together in series where one's connected directly to two, that would put me at 42 volts, which is over the charge parameter of this unit. Now I could probably get away with it. It's probably not going to hurt it. But if you put too many extra volts over the recommended voltage, you're going to burn out the charge controller, no question. And so it's really hard, even though this has a 300 watt charge controller, I have not been able to get 300 watts to go into it, which is the big problem that I'm having. So that's the biggest fault in this system. If they had just made a charge controller that had a little bit better charge parameter, then I could easily connect up to 300 or 400 watts to get that full charge to go into it. The best case scenario I have seen is to take two 100 watt panels, connect them together in series, do another group of two 100 watt panels, connect those together in parallel using a two to one branch connector. And then you're getting about 42 volts and about 12 amps to go into this, which is technically over paneling it. But even doing that method, I still haven't gotten 300 watts to go in. Now, as far as what you can do with this, it's got a regulated 12 volt plug, two 5521 barrel plugs here, two USB-A, one 100 watt USB-C. And then it's got the 320 volt house outlets here on the back. And then it's even got the DC charging port right here, which uses an Anderson power pole, which is great because that's a real common plug. And then right here is the wall charger. And that's one of the things I like a lot about this P15 unit is this storage space right up here. I actually can keep the whole wall charger right here. There's no big power adapter brick on it. So that keeps life really easy. 
We've got a car charger right here. And then as well, the Anderson PowerPole to MC4 adapter for solar charging. I keep the user manual in here as well. But uh, EcoFlow has done similar things where they are using the tops of their batteries as storage compartments. And I really, really like that because it keeps life so much simpler when you're just trying to grab this and get going, you know everything's there ready to go. Another cool feature is this does have a light built in here on the top. Now I've griped about lights in the past, and one of the main reasons is because they take up real estate and they're really not that great. They take up the real estate here on the front or on the side or whatever. This one is tucked away and I have found this to be bright enough. Uh, recently on a camping trip, my kids were making bead bracelets and necklaces and stuff. And with how bright this is, it's plenty enough to do activities like that. So it's good enough for simple activities but obviously I wouldn't use it like a flashlight. Now a 1500 watt inverter is gonna be plenty to run a lot of simple things, which is what makes it so good for portable power. The real most common way that I've used it, I've done this multiple times, I'll put up pictures here. I went to a hand-to-hand -hand combat training class recently. It was three days in the sun outside, super hot. And I wanted to make sure I had ice cold water and cold food and everything ready to go so that way I could keep myself going as best as possible. So I brought this as well as my DC chest fridge freezer and it kept it running all day. I don't even think I got below 50% running it the entire day. And then I, on another trip, I used this to keep actually an ice cream cake cold. We had a long ways to go to get to our destination. It was hot out. And I didn't want to take a normal cooler and get a bunch of dry ice or anything like that. So I just took this, took my DC fridge, put it all the way down to the coldest setting. So it was working like a freezer, put the ice cream cake in it, and it was perfect when we got there still good to go. I've also used this just for simple portable power for my laptop. You can even use it like a projector or a sound system or anything like that. This is really good for that. But if you're looking to be able to recharge this with solar, it's really just not that great. But the wall charging is incredible on this. It goes at about 800 watts charging. And so this will charge up to about 80% in just an hour, which is pretty impressive. Now, normally I do a bunch of load testing and stuff like that, but I've had this system for over two months and I've already done a lot of that. And I know that this will do what it says it can do, but just be aware that the harder you use it, the less cycles you're gonna get. It's rated to a thousand cycles. And so to help with that, that's one of the things that they've done with the settings here is you can actually use this button right here. It's a multi-directional pad. And so if I push down, it'll go to settings and I click OK and it goes straight into all of these settings. Like I can change the language and the frequency, the brightness and the charging speed right here. So I can click charging speed and I can either select two hours charging speed from the wall charger or five hours, which will help slow down the charge rate, which will help the life cycles be longer on this system. Now, they went with a lightweight system like this on purpose to make sure that you could get it where you wanted it to go. That's why they're using lithium ion. But with that, you're going to get less charge cycles, but you're going to get lighter weight. So there's a give and take there between lithium ion and lithium iron phosphate. So I like to keep mine on two hours because when I want this to charge, I want it to charge up quickly. And then one of the other cool features is the adjustable brightness here. So if it's really bright out, I can adjust the screen all the way up. Or if it's really dark in a room and I don't want the screen blinding me, I can adjust the brightness there. But even cooler than all of that is this UPS ability. This does work as a bona fide UPS. I could have, say, a refrigerator plugged into this and then have the wall charger plugged in. And so this is going to stay at 100%. And then as soon as grid power shuts down, this is going to continue to take over, running the power for the fridge for as long as the battery lasts. That's where it would be helpful to have a couple of solar panels connected because that is going to help offset the power usage of the fridge to help it run even longer. But again, this really isn't the right size for emergency preparedness. But just be aware it does work really well as a UPS setup. Now, my Patreon members, I appreciate you guys because you're always sending me questions and I love having this direct contact with you. If you guys want to have direct contact with me where you and I can chat independently, just go to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep and consider becoming a member there. And to all of my subscribers, thank you so much for being here. You guys are incredible and I appreciate you continuing to come to the channel and especially you. If you're a new viewer, consider subscribing. You may be considering other systems. This is a feather cap sized solar generator. If you don't know what that means, I'll have a link down to the comparison chart which compares all the solar generators live on an updated sheet. It's 100% free. You get all of the information, apples to apples comparison on everything. You just click the tabs on the bottom of that sheet and it'll take you 
to the different sizes of solar generators. So that way you're not comparing this to something that's way bigger, that's way more capable. If you are interested in getting a system like this, then there'll be links down below as well, as well as links down to poweredportablesolar.com. So you can see my top recommended emergency backup power kits. This is for running your entire house, running an off-grid cabin, running RVs, running van life setups, whatever it is. I have kits there that I prefer, that I personally use, that I own, that I purchase with my own money. And so I can test them for you so you know if they're good or not. So thank you again so much for being here. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you get prepared. Having emergency backup power is a really good way to do that. This, I don't qualify as emergency power completely just because it doesn't have enough solar input. But it does work great as just a power station that I can recharge on the go here and there. So for that reason, I give it a thumbs up. But for emergency power backup, kind of a thumbs down. Shoot me an email if you'd like to info at poweredportablesolar.com. We're happy to help you with any questions that you have and find a kit that works perfect for you in your situation. Thank you so much. Be prepared. I will see you guys in the next video.